your passion up, leave it a stranger! What's up, everybody? Sean here from Washed Up Media. We're hanging out at the E1 office today in New York City. And I got Josh here with me. Hello, hello. And uh, we got some new stuff that we're talking about. He's in a new project, and we're going to basically just get the download of uh, what's going on. So, um, 68, man. Uh, what's going on with it, man? There's, uh, there's a lot of talk with this thing. <clears throat> Cool. Uh, hopefully it's good talk. Um, yeah, it's it's my new thing. It's my new project. Uh, and yeah, I mean, the basic is a two-piece uh, rock duo. Uh, and uh, the, 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 the mantra that sort of developed out of the whole thing is how much noise can two guys make. And uh, we've got one tour under our belts. And as of now, we're making quite a lot of noise uh and we hope to make more so <laughs> cool man so um there's some stuff going on you got the album dropping very soon uh, July what's eighth i was gonna say so we got uh, what's um what's the title of the album it's called in humor and sadness and i noticed uh i well i didn't notice but i heard uh, you guys are doing something cool with like the track listing names <laughs> uh and like what like it transferred over like to itunes like everything's just like track one track two or something yeah I don't know how cool it is, uh, but the idea came, I mean, I've never been one to name the songs sort of the conventional, you know, top 40, the, the, here's a catchy chorus and we're going to name the song that so that when you're talking to me about the song, it gets stuck in my head and, and, and it's all part of this big formula. It's all part of the big system, this sort of A plus B equals dollar signs uh, mentality. Um, obviously, that's not a world I live in, and I have nothing to do with that. So I've always sort of tried to n never use sort of conventional song titles, etc. Um, and with this, I just wanted to name it something as obscure and, and as as uh, as nondescriptive as just no titles at all. Um, but with the digital m world that I live in, unfortunately, uh, you know they they. <laughs> just dubbed it track one, track two, track three, track whatever. So, so you know, there is something that pops up, uh, but I'm okay with it. I mean, it's, it's the idea of just, you know, not making it so spoon-fed and, and so bubblegum, you know, popped easy to swallow. You know, I like the idea of having to, to sort of work for it a little bit, you know, and, and sort of creating kind of a, a smart audience out of the the whole deal and not not having it so spoon-fed and so so uh, formulaic as as you know as uh, the powers that be force upon us sometimes right on man so now i've been seeing like the videos up on youtube you know you guys jamming it's it's a cool it's kind of cool to see uh that aspect kind of coming back to heavier music i also want to talk about like the recording process with this which aspect the, uh, the human element? <laughs> yes, actually, that is the exact one that I'm. Isn't that a bummer? That, that, that that's the, that's something to be stoked about. That's yeah, you know, um, <laughs> humans are back. Oh my gosh! The, I mean, I know though. I know. So true, I know what the future holds. We've all seen Terminator Two, but at the end of the day, <laughs> it's uh, it is a shame that the robots have taken over so early in the music world. But uh, but no, I appreciate that. I appreciate the oh, yeah. the <laughs> noticing. But yeah, so so you just you, you guys are just gunning it live, right? Yeah, man. Cool. Uh, yeah, we. I mean, it is very human element. Uh, you know, the same with the same way, the same mentality we had in the chariot. But with with sixty eight, it's very much just sort of we want humans playing the instruments, and you know, uh, the human sort of imperfections that come with that. I, I'm okay with. I, I'm not trying to hide that in our technological crutch that you know we that we. Uh, that we have just because we have the tool um, let it let it sometimes be a convenience not not a crutch you know and I feel like um, with us and with anything uh, you know that I that I'll ever do I feel like that I want I want to be a human playing it you know what I mean I, I don't want to like I don't know sometimes it could be overproduced and you, you suck the soul out of it out of the music and that's not anything I want to be a part of anyway Cool, man. So let's let's talk about Mike, uh, your drummer. Yeah. How did uh, you guys kind of come together? Have have you guys uh, known each other for a while? How did that? Uh, form? Yeah. Uh, well, I the studio I record at, I work there as well. I've produced a few bands, and uh, 
his older brother um, has recorded a few bands, and so I met him through the studio through his older brother. But since then, we've become friends, and uh, and, and this is many years ago. Um, but um, anytime I, I was working on like a solo artist or whatever, and, and needed a drummer, he would be the go-to. Um, and so you know, I knew how good he was, and and I knew his ability to just sort of wing it and, and, and not make it look like he's winging it, um, which is something that we do live a lot. Um, so, uh, yeah, when I thought about this uh, duo and when I, when I had the idea and everything, he was the, one of the first people to, to, to pop into my brain to ask to see if he'd want to do it. And, uh, and uh, yeah, he was, thankfully. That's cool, man. So I've also <laughs> noticed your... Um you got the same uh, producer on this album that you've been working with for a while. Um, yeah. Matt, uh, Gold Matt Goldman. Yeah, Matt yeah. Goldman. Yeah, he, he, uh, yeah I, I, he's done everything that I've ever been a part of since The Chariot um, and probably will just continue to do so as long as uh, he's cool with it. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, we're friends at this point and, uh, you know, we've been friends for quite a while and it's, easy to, it's easier to work with a, a producer that, we don't have to go through like the learning curve right uh instead of throwing 12 ideas at my way that if you knew me you knew i wouldn't like uh you know he's able to just um shoot the one up that that you know and he knows where i come from and he knows sort of you know what i like and don't like and and he and he's a big believer in the human element he 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 believes in recording drums that a drummer played and, and, and you know, um, not over editing something to where it just isn't real anymore, you know. Um, and he knows how to make that sound good. And so that's uh, part of my moral code and part of my beliefs is, is uh, as a musician and as an artist that I probably hold higher than anything is, is to, to really be able to do it. And so the fact that he can record it and make it sound good is makes it very easy to keep going back to him every time right. <laughs> that's good stuff um <clears throat> also i you know the whole live sounding that you guys got going where it's just like your drummers got like was like one crash symbol in like yeah it's it it a symbol and a tom yeah yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, and i mean you're just got like a powerhouse of amps behind you just you know what yeah. was there like i know a lot of guys these days are really like you know obsessing over tone and things of that nature, were there specific brands that you wanted to use to kind of hone in on that sound that you were really looking for? <clears throat> well, on the record, we were able to just really play. Right. Um, we, we, we played around with a lot, uh, uh, Goldman has a lot of vintage old combo amps that, that are really meant to just be clean. Um, and we would just push way too hard through them. We, we'd nice. put pedals before them and all this stuff or, or just crank it way too loud. Um, um, so, it, on the record, we were able to just really play around and just goof off with different stuff. Um, it was really fun. It was like it was like a uh, recess, you know. We yeah. we spend, I mean, two grown men just spending hours listening to how an amp feeds back is is, <laughs> is brilliant, you know. That so is for, great, man. for me, it's it's very enjoyable. But I would definitely sometimes step back and just bust out laughing and be like, "Look at us! This is what we're doing." Uh, uh, and so the, uh, uh, the average person would walk in and be like, "What's wrong? You know, yeah. something's wrong." And and we're go we're over there going. I like the way that sounds. The way that sounds good. Um, so it was very fun and very able to, and we just tried anything. Anything we had an idea, we tried it. We tried Marshalls, we tried Softex, we tried, you know, combo amps, we tried uh, things that we didn't think was going to work, you know, just tried it. Um, and then live, it became a thing of like, okay, well, what's the sound that's sort of going to push the, the general tone, the, right. the thing, you know, I, I obviously can't bring all that with me. So what's the thing? And uh, this amp company, Paul and Mills, actually hit me up, uh, and they really appreciated sort of that, is it vintage, is it new kind of sound that, in their words, that, that we were doing. So, you know, they came up, and, and we, we tested a lot of their amps and stuff, and it was a perfect fit. And so uh, live, that's who I use. Uh, it's called Paul and Mills, and uh, they actually built me um, – uh, full stack, two, nice. two full stacks and a, and a bass rig. Um, and it's really nice because, as I said with the combo amps, uh, we were kind of just pushing too hard. Um, the A cab of the full stack is just 112. 
and it's it, the idea behind that is literally just to to push hard. Right. You know, you, you have four twelves and it all gets evenly dispensed, whatever. Um, but this is just, I mean, it's it's going, you know, and, like and Marty I think, McFly. Yeah, exactly, <laughs> exactly. And live, you can really feel it, you can really hear it. You know, it just, the sound sounds really great. And then the the B cab is actually uh, one fifteen and three twelves, so it kind of produces that low end and stuff. So so it's a very sort of customized thing that they did for me, and and their heads sound great, and the tone is just exactly what. Um, it is just a match made in heaven. And so, uh, yeah, so that's how I, it comes out live. So, uh, lastly, let's, um, I mean, touring, you know, for the future, what's, what's going on, man? <laughs> when can we see this? Live? Um, well, I, uh, I just did a tour with a band called Chiodos. Um, it went around the States, uh, and it was, it was quite nice. Um, they were the, one of the first bands that hit us up after, after we released our video, um, and so we're very grateful to them, and, uh, and it was very successful. Uh, but um, in July, which is when our album drops, we have a tour with a band called Listener, um, uh, and uh, and he was uh, Dan Smith from that was on one of our records in the Chariot, and we we basically just try to tour with each other as much as we possibly can, and um, and then after that we go to uh, the UK for Heavy Fest and do some mainland Europe stuff. Uh, going into Russia for a couple days, and then hopefully some more things will fall into place for uh, fall and winter. Keep busy. Well, Josh, uh, hey, man, thanks for coming out and talking to us today. It's been a pleasure. Thank you. Everybody out there, hope you guys enjoyed the interview. Uh, Stick around for some more stuff by 68, and uh, we'll see you guys next time.